Okay, let's analyze all this now with our panel of experts. Martha Raddus just returned from two weeks in the Middle East, former vice chair of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General James Cartwright, and Valley Nasser, a former senior advisor to the State Department, now dean of the Johns Hopkins School of Advanced International Studies, author of this book, The Dispensable Nation, American Foreign Policy in Retreat. And Martha, let me begin with you, because we just heard Senator Se Secretary Kerry say there, this is not Iraq, but I was very struck by an interview you did earlier this month with uh, General Dempsey, where he said that the shadow of Iraq hangs very heavy over the military leaders. It, I, I think it does. I think they look at that all the time, and it always hangs over the American public, too. This idea that the public and that the military is war-weary, the American public and the military is war-wise. They've been through this before. And what struck me this week is listening to, to the President and, and Secretary Kerry say, this will not be an open-ended commitment. I don't know how you say that, because this could be a chronic problem. Their mission, if it's narrow to deter and prevent any use of chemical weapons, what if they do it again? You would have to go back and attack again. So I think it, it's pretty hard to say it wouldn't be open-ended in some way. And General Dempsey told you the application of force rarely produces and in fact never produces the outcome we seek. Let me take that to you, General Cartwright. You've been in the room. You've been in the Situation Room when decisions like this are made. Take us inside as best you can this, this conversation between the President and General Dempsey where he comes to him and says, hey, you know, we've ramped all this up, but can we hold off on a strike? You know, I think it starts at the tactical level. And the first question is, can the forces of the posture stay on station for a month or two months until we go to Congress, until a decision is reached? And the answer to that is yes, they can do that. The second question is, will the targets stay that they have used or, or planned uh, to carry out this strategy? Will they be there when, when we go? Or will they be moved and be someplace else? And again, most of the targets associated with this limited strike are fixed. Their buildings, their facilities, their areas. So they're going to be there. So and, from, and, 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 and try to detail as best you can what these targets are. As far as I understand, we're not going to strike the stockpiles no, of chemical no, weapons. No, you won't stop. You would not want to strike the stockpiles because the dispersal of the gases and the chemicals would would affect large areas around that that activity. But what you want to try to touch is uh, in this idea of prevent, which I don't think is possible, but um, the idea of deterring the use of these chemicals in the future. You want to go at the facilities. You're going to want to go at the places where production is done. You're going to want to go at the places where potentially they would move across channels of communication, bridges, things like that that would allow them to move it. I mean, they're looking at all of the command and control in this area. So the question becomes, are those targets going to be valid a month from now? Or will they be moved, et cetera? They're not going to move. And Valley Nasser, we've gotten some early indications from Syria. Again, we saw Terry Moran say that the Assad regime is declaring victory. I wonder how this is seen uh, in the rest of the region. The president says that if we go to Congress, it's going to be a sign of strength. Is that the way it's seen in the Middle East? Well, if the Congress were to decide very quickly, yes, but uh, the perception is that the decision is now thrown into the gridlock of American politics, and that doesn't really give a sense that uh, either Assad would think that if he did this again, uh, there would be an easy decision, or our allies would think that uh, America is uh, ready to make quick decision. This is going to be effective. We can only shore up our credibility if we make timely decisions, and then if we act in an appropriate time manner and then effectively. Right now, that's not the perception. And what would an effective strike be? Well, we, we have to first uh, ha have a quick decision making and an effective strike cannot be declared ahead of time that is going to be limited and they will not change the course of the war and that every time we're going to make these decisions is going to be a, uh, you know, going through the whole process of American domestic polit political wrangling. That does not ma make a case for deterrence for Assad. And it does seem, Martha Raddus, that the White House and the administration are trying to walk a very fine line here. They want to punish Assad, but they want to assure the entire American public, hey, we're not getting in any deeper. But I was struck by something General Anthony Zinni, the former head of CENTCOM, said this week. He said, you can't be a little bit pregnant with strikes like this. It, it, it's true. And it is a fine line. And it, and it opens up the possibility of what in the world is the strategy here? What is the long-term strategy? I think you were getting that with, to, to that with General Dempsey. What are we trying to do eventually? 
with this narrow strike and what will the effect of that strike be not only here at home but in Syria but the entire region and now he's forcing essentially Congress to walk the red line that he drew. And General Dempsey is it fair to conclude and I've seen a fair amount of reporting on this that the military overall is skeptical of the effectiveness of very limited strikes like this? Historically, trying to punish someone with a limited strike has not been an effective deterrent. Um, and so the question becomes, what is the strategy? Are we trying to punish? And then are we trying to deter from use of the chemicals in the future and retaliation in the future? And if that's the case, then what is the, what is the appropriate target set? What is the appropriate military action that would at least lead us in that direction. And one of the things the region has seen Valley Nasser though is a president who has done just about everything he can to avoid getting excessively entangled in the conflicts of the Middle East. Well, to get entangled at all. And I think that's still his message, that he, he wants only to punish Assad because he violated the red line. We don't want to get involved in Syria. We don't have any view about how this war ends. We're not articulating what is at stake here. We're still not engaged. And the message to Assad also is that we don't want to get engaged, that uh, we talk about deterrence. But the, the critical deterrence is, is American decisiveness and commitment to the region. And unless and until that's there, I don't think we are either impressing our allies or uh, we're really threatening Assad. Okay. And Georgia, he really does have to go back to that red line comment the president made. Everyone heard that comment. Everybody knows what that means. Everybody knows what that means. Mean. But even if he hadn't made that comment, in the face of these pictures of a, no. apparently a thousand, more than a thousand Syrians gassed to death, including children, wouldn't have he had to act anyway? I, I, you would think he would. You would think he would. As, as America, as a leader, you would think he would. Okay, we've got to take a quick break.